Well, good afternoon to all the attendees joining the room slowly but surely. We will give about a two to three minute buffer for folks to get in. We had a good few folks register, so we want to make sure everybody is able to get in before we start. Thank you all for joining us for today's PPP Forgiveness webinar. We'll be kicking off in about two minutes. Here. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we really want to thank you all so much for being on the webinar this Friday afternoon uh, before Mother's Day weekend. So anyone celebrating Mother's Day, we'd like to say happy Mother's Day to all of you. My name is Hilda Kennedy, and I am founder and president of Ampac Business Capital. And I, again, am delighted to um, have you all here as we talk about PPP forgiveness. I'm going to give some introductory comments and give you a high level of what PPP forgiveness is and how it gets implemented. And then I'm going to introduce um, Brian Kennedy, who is uh, heading up our PPP efforts in our Entrepreneurship Center, and Anna Rubacaba, who you'll talk more to because she heads up the forgiveness component of our PPP loans. And she's also a VP over grants administration. So with that, we will move into the presentation. Again, thank you all so much for being here. I wanna tell you a little bit about AMPAC and who we are. What we are thinking about um, as we finish off this round of PPP, and we're not certain that there'll be another round of PPP, many are thinking about what is it going to take to recover and sustain businesses for the long haul. And we're laser focused on that as well. We want to make sure that we're stimulating the economy, but we're also planning for recovery. And so our mission is to finance and foster small business success from cradle to legacy. And why we do what we do is to uplift communities, strengthen families, and advance entrepreneurial dreams. That's who we are, Ampac Business Capital. We've been around 14 years, and we're delighted to have uh, be able to serve small businesses. It's the wind beneath our wings. In addition to what we do with PPP loans, and we've done a lot of PPP loans. Hopefully, most of you are customers, but some of us, um, some of you may not be, and you want to learn more about forgiveness. What we do when we're do not doing uh, PPP loans is we are uh, provide an array of government-backed and 
private loans for growing small businesses. And we provide loans from 5,000 to over 30 million, depending on the products that we're working with. We do SBA 504 loans for businesses that are buying commercial real estate, buying equipment, doing tenant improvements or ground up construction. And that product really allows small business owners to go from rental to ownership of their commercial real estate with fixed rate financing, low down payments, long terms of tw up to 25 year term. And it allows you to finance all of the fees into the loan as well as any tenant improvements or equipment. It's a stellar program that's been around since 1958. And today the interest rate on that program is 2.9%. So it's a really attractive program to help small businesses to grow and again, to own their commercial real estate and really plan their cost over time and not be impacted by rising interest, by rising lease rates or interest rates since the rates are fixed for you. We also provide loans for working capital, inventory and business acquisitions. Um, we do CDFI loans, which is Community Development Financial Institutions. We are a, um, a CDFI, and we've been authorized by the Department of Treasury to make loans to small businesses for this working capital. Those loans are up to $150,000. We're also a partner of the SBA for microloans. And those loans are from any, for anyone from startups that have a good business plan and projections to more um, emerging businesses and they go up to uh, uh, $50,000. And we have become recently, we're working to become a community advantage lender and have already um, been involved in the training for that. Uh, and those loans go up to $250,000 with a government back guarantee. What I'm trying to let you know is if you're thinking about your recovery and thinking about other programs that you might want to apply to, we have a number of different products and ways that we can help you. And so we'd be delighted to do that. We also do business advising. If we can't help you, we try and find best fit lending partners or loan programs to help a small business. Because we thrive on advancing entrepreneurial dreams, if we can't, we really want to make sure that you can get to a yes. In addition, we have training programs. We've been doing those virtually. We used to do those um, quarterly in person. And we've just purchased our own building and are building out an entrepreneur ecosystem where we're gonna have regular training with several partners of the Small Business Administration so that um, our small business community can have 24 seven access to valuable training to help you grow, scale and sustain for the long haul. Again, in this recovery mode, we're thinking about how do we make sure that, the, that a business can start over, a business can pivot, a business can grow to the next level coming out of the devastation that the pandemic caused for many businesses. And we partner with a number of business owners. We like to say what one of our clients says, Ampac seeks to make business dreams come true. So on the next slide, um, some of our differentiators are that we are a matchmaker I talked a little bit about that, finding the best fit uh, in non-traditional or traditional lending partners. If you don't have a banking partner, as a mission-based lender and community development financial institution, our goal is to help a business owner climb the ladder to a banking partner so that as you grow and you need lines of credit, we can help you to find the right fit we have a number of bankers on our board and within our network, so we can certainly be a, we're a good matchmaker for that. Um, our loans are non-traditional, so our underwriting guidelines, we call it underwriting with the heart, and we believe in second chances. 
and that's what we uh, that's what we purport as part of our core values. We have a relentless know-how to get the deal done for you, and we fight for the yes. Recently, we launched a minority business loan program because of the devastation that we saw with the number of minority, especially Black and Latino-led businesses that were not getting any of the emergency relief programs and still struggling to access capital. So this program provides a loan forgiveness component in terms of the interest rate. It provides a grant component for those who participate in training and the interest rates in terms are low so that a small business can get access, access to this capital and uh, be able to uh, turn some of those numbers around about the number of minority businesses who are not getting access to capital. So don't hesitate to ask us about this program as you think about any, um, as you think about recovery and the next level. Next slide. So um, some of the helpful resources as you're thinking about PPP forgiveness, if you're unable to get to AMPAC or you want to get the latest and the greatest information, we try and have all of that on our website at AMPAC.com, but go directly to the source and go to www.sba.gov backslash funding, and it'll show all of the programs as it relates to PPP loan forgiveness. We want to make sure that your loan gets forgiven and that you know all of the regulations and guidelines associated with that. Next slide. And I'm going to move through the next slides fairly quickly because I want to make sure you can hear from Anna and Brian on exactly how to get it done. The process timeline, there's a borrower application that you have to submit to the lender to get your forgiveness. We as a lender have 90 days to review that application. It goes to SBA for review and remittance of the forgiveness to us. Um, when we, when you go through the forgiveness process, if you have not submitted your forgiveness application within 10 months, then you will have to pay, a, pay the loan. Remember, this is a loan. It doesn't become a grant until you submit your forgiveness application and that lender gives you the forgiveness. And that's what we're doing and processing a number of loans and Anna has been a real winner with that. Some of you are hearing in the news that there's been challenges with people getting their forgiveness or getting their forgiveness applications processed. We have not had those kinds of challenges at AMPAC and serving the clients because Anna has been phenomenal and relentless in getting that done. Next slide. Who qualifies for forgiveness? Borrowers with PPP loans of $150,000 or less um, and who meet the um, full-time equivalent and wage reduction statutory requirements, first or second draw borrowers who submit and qualify using the 3508 easy form or 3508. Any borrower who qualifies must submit the form 3508 that Anna will be reviewing with you. The um, borrower, the documentation that you submit for forgiveness uh, must be retained um, and if not submitted to the lender for proof of your 25 re percent reduction for second draws. SBA may request additional documentation. You will see on the form, the burden of proof is on you, the small business owner or the borrower. So what's the basic forgiveness requirements? 60% of, of the paycheck protection loan amount must have been spent on payroll costs, 60%. And the other 40% must, 
must have been used for eligible uh, non-payroll expenses. And we'll talk a little bit more about that quickly. Next slide. So key conditions for forgiveness. If you don't qualify to use the EZ or 3508S form, 60% as I mentioned on payroll costs and a wage reduction of not more than 25% during the covered period. And the covered period is eight to 24 weeks. Next slide. These are some of the guidance and clarifications that SBA has provided for how you do forgiveness. So your forgiveness form must be completed and submitted to the lender. We have that form on our website. You, the small business owner, chooses, you choose the covered period, anywhere from eight to 24 weeks. And I'll make a note here because there's been some confusion. We're very clear as a lender what our guidance is. Some people who have gotten a first draw PPP loan and they have not gotten to their eight weeks of the covered period have wanted to go on and submit another, submit for a second draw PPP loan saying, I will definitely use those funds. We cannot start a for our second draw application, which we're not taking at this juncture, but we certainly cannot start a second draw application if you have not even completed your 24, your eight or 24 week or eight to 24 week covered period. It's eight to 24 weeks. It's not seven weeks, it's not six weeks. You have to have gotten to that period. The full-time equivalent and wage reductions uh, exceptions, including the safe harbor, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, in the first round of PPP loans, there was a requirement that if you got an economic injury disaster loan advance grant, then they were gonna reduce that from your PPP forgiveness. That has been eliminated. You still are required to submit the required payroll documentation to document, I've spent the money on payroll per my requirement when I submit it for the application. So payroll expense reports, non-payroll working capital expenses, proof of your gross receipts reduction if you're on a second draw, all of those things are required to document PPP, um, PPP forgiveness. If you are a Schedule C and you don't have 941 payroll records, then we are asking those borrowers, those small businesses to document that with a check that they've written and in the memo put payroll and then we will use that as our documentation that it was used for payroll. Um, for those who have employees that make over $100,000, you know that the forgiveness is capped for up to $100,000. That safe harbor, harbor provision that I mentioned, if you try to hire back people and they said, I'm making more money on unemployment, I'm not going to come back to work, and you document that, that is required that you document that you provided job offers or you provided a letter and there are refusals, they refuse to be hired, or you had to fire someone, or there were voluntary resig resignations, and you can't meet that um, 60% for that reason, then you fall into the safe harbor and you still can document that full time equivalent position. Next slide. And I know there's a lot of questions coming into the Q&A. Go on and put those in the Q&A and we will definitely get to that slide. Um, again, on the full time equivalent, I won't get into those in detail um, other than to say, there are exceptions to the full-time equivalent, and I went over some of those already in terms of the safe harbor provisions. 
if you have those questions, you can work with your uh, representative. In our case, you can work with Anna, who can kind of walk you through what those exceptions are. Um, if you were somehow unable to meet the full-time equivalent under the covered period, there are exceptions as I described earlier, we wanna work with you to try and get there. And we've seen so much these days about people trying to attract people to take a job and they're not taking the jobs because of they're getting more on unemployment. So next slide. I wanna get to the heart of the presentation. Um, expenses that are applicable or applicable for forgiveness. We've already talked about payroll costs. Payroll costs include healthcare benefits. It includes retirement. It includes um, any of those expenses associated with your payroll costs. In addition to what's applicable, non-payroll costs up to 40% of your PPP loan can be used for non-payroll expenses. And I'll detail that a little bit later. Um, I've already talked about the forgiveness process. So we'll go to the next slide. This on the payroll on the form that you will use for forgiveness. There's the 3508EZ and there's the 3508S. For loans under $150,000, you're gonna use the EZ form, 3508EZ form. In that you have to, in, in order for the form to be processed, you have to check one or one of the two boxes that's required. And there's an and statement there. You are certifying that I did not reduce annual salary or hourly wages of any employee by more than 25% during the covered period compared to the most recent full quarter of the covered period. And you're certifying that you did not reduce the number of employees or the average paid hours of employees between the covered period, January 1, 2020, and the end of the covered period. Again, remember those safe, safe harbor provisions that I talked about. You either check this box or you check the borrower did not reduce annual salary or hourly wages of any employee by more than 25% during the covered period compared to the most recent quarter and the borrower was unable to operate during the covered period at the same level of business activity as before February 15, 2020, due to compliance with requirements established or guidance issued between March 1, 2020 and December 31, 2020. So if the government, if the governor shut down your business and you weren't able to operate you may be checking that second box and it, it has that and provision. So that's the start of the application. If you can't check one of those boxes, then you can't apply for PPP forgiveness. Next slide. Payroll costs, again, reviewed again, it's cash compensation, employee benefits, and owner compensation. We, get, we got a lot of questions about the owner compensation. Um, and it does include the employer portion of state and local taxes paid by the borrower or assessed on compensation. Next slide. Um, I won't get into too much of the employer owner compensation only to say that the owner is self-employed, independent contractors, and sole proprietors. And in this round, the Schedule C calculation was based on um, the, was based on the gross receipts, not the net income. Next slide. Non-payroll costs. 
payments of interest, business rent or lease payments, business payments for services like electricity, gas, water, transportation, telephone, and the like, all eligible non-payroll costs in addition to PPE equipment. Go on to the next slide. Um, covered operations, property damage, if you were in an area that had vandalism or looting, uh, supplier costs for supplier goods that you weren't able to use, and again, the worker protection expenditures or that PPE equipment. Next slide. If there's been a change of ownership, uh, you will need to document that and document what surrounds that change of ownership um, at the time that you need to, if you're applying for forgiveness, we need to just be able to document any change of ownership associated with the PPP loan. Next slide. Uh, on the forgiveness component, um, an impact to forgiveness on the full-time equivalent. Actual loan forgiveness amount depends on whether the average weekly number of full-time equivalent employees during the covered period or alternative covered period was less than during the borrower's chosen period. So as we evaluate full-time equivalent, that's why when we're considering a PPP application, um, people coming for the second draw, we have to make sure that that covered period has actually been achieved. So we can't start a PPP forgiveness on a second or a PPP application for a second draw if we haven't even completed the PPP covered period for the first draw. Um, there's documentation that we're aware of of the period for the borrower's election as we're looking at the second draw, February to June 30th. Um, January 1 to February 29, and then there's a calculation for se uh, seasonal workers as well. If you have some questions on full-time equivalent, we can kind of walk through that with you in more detail um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Next slide. Um, on borrowers who are on sa uh, salary or hourly wages, again, looking at the full-time equivalent of those and considering the fact that if you don't get to, if you had to reduce the salary by more than 25%, then we have to look at whether there are safe harbor, harbor provisions that can make up for that full-time equivalent calculation. And we have some examples that we work from in evaluating that calculation. Next slide. So here we're gonna come into the meat of the forgiveness. And I'm gonna turn it over to Brian and Anna because they have some video presentations to really walk you through that PPP forgiveness application process. Real Thank time. You so much. Thank you so much, Olga. This has been awesome being a part of this presentation with you all. We will be given about a 23, 24 minute clip that's gonna walk you through a quick introduction, a cover sheet, as well as a mock application. Continue to populate your questions into the Q&A and we will step into the question and answer section right after this video. Thank you and Looking forward to it. Hello and welcome. We are here at Ampac Business Capital to cover your PPP loan forgiveness. Thank you for tuning in. And we hope that this serves as a positive and insightful guide for you getting through the PPP loan forgiveness process successfully. My name is Brian Kennedy here at Ampac Business Capital, and I am joined by Anna Rubalcaba, who is our our, one of our vice presidents spearheading this program. She will be walking you through it. And thank you once again for tuning in. Anna, take it away. Thank you. Welcome to Ampac Business Capital Payroll Protection Program. This is a forgiveness process. So to start off, 
we will be including a sheet that will give you the information. So I'll go ahead and go over the overview of the uh, forgiveness process at AMPAC. It's really important that you start from the beginning. As soon as your loan funds, start compiling your information. I mean, you could read through these wonderful disclosures, but um, please be aware that you are technically eligible to apply for SBA forgiveness between eight and 24 weeks from the date your loan was funded. The eligibility defaults not normally into 24 weeks. If you need to do it sooner, then let us know. We recommend a minimum of eight weeks or 2.5, because 2.5 weeks is 10 weeks of payroll. But if you choose to do your loan in eight weeks, just go ahead and um, uh, work with us. The advantage of working with MPAC is that you can call someone. And I know the, the big banks out there probably feel really bad because I'm saying this, but all of our customers have always felt very comfortable because they can call a number and they get a live voice. You can contact Anna Rubalcava, myself, and I'll be handling the forgiveness process. I did it last year. My email is included in this um, information guide. And know that at AMPAC, our software will generate your correct loan forgiveness application. So instead of going to other sources, which we do, by the way, but we have the most current one, and we will generate it because we have all your information, and we'll cover that in another video. So email us should your email address be changed, please, or your contact information. Let us know what's going on with your business. It's important to us, and maybe we can help. Um, a personal conference call will be um, scheduled for you if you send us an email. And some people say, well, how do I use my funds? Most of our clients are self-employed, so we recommend that you have two business two accounts one business and one personal they can both be personal accounts if you're doing business as with your own name and you don't have a different um, company name but if you have a different company name use that one for the deposit on your funds um, transfer them over to your personal account cash them or transfer them either one will be fine but be sure to begin your disbursement of your paychecks by dividing your loan proceeds either weekly, a minimum of eight weeks, or monthly if you want to, then you pay yourself 2.5 times or three, three paychecks. We recommend that you do not exceed $8,333 per month because when, if you look back when you got your loan, you're going to see that um, that is the maximum amount per month. Uh, write your check cash it, deposit it into your personal account, and you can always reinvest in whatever you need to do for your business if you want to. This process will enable you to provide copies of the canceled checks or payroll from your um, business account to your personal account. If you have employees, we need 941s. We um, state quarterly business or individual uh, employee wage reporting or unemployment uh, insurance taxes are are also to be reported to the relevant state. In, in this case, we only lend in California. And right below that, it shows you what non-business payroll expenses qualify for forgiveness. So there's several of them here, including sanitizer, I know some of you may not may have it spread out with personal receipts, but please be sure to have those things handy so that you can um, provide them to us. The resource that we got that we have been using is SBA funding programs, and you can see the pay, Paycheck Protection Program. One of the things that I want to remind you is this is called the Payroll Protection Program. So it protects your payroll. So that is the most important part of your funding that you pay yourself. When are you ready for free loan forgiveness? Please contact our office. Let us know that you're uh, that you need uh, your just at least seven after the after your funding and um, apply with SBA once all your loan proceeds have been used. 
you do have an eligibility date, which is eight weeks after your loan funding. So if you fund it sooner than that, um, make sure that your checks are dated at least a month apart. Um, technically, you do have 24 weeks. And so you, if you want to spread it out a little bit more, that's fine. Just let us know and we won't change your eligibility amount, eligibility date. Um, you can continue to communicate with us with unpack throughout the process. We do have telephone numbers, we work remotely, but we do have extensions at AMPAC and soon we'll be returning. Please check our website because in our website, we have some wonderful classes that you could also take. Thank you for attending. Hello and welcome back to the AMPAC PPP Forgiveness tutorial video program. We will be continuing with the cover sheet for forgiveness. Anna's going to walk you through a informative cover sheet that can give a really clear step-by-step -step instruction. So if you have questions, as always, reach out. But hopefully this gives you a really good guide of how to go through this forgiveness process. All righty. Thank you for tuning in. Anna, take it away. Hello. We'll begin with the first part of the um, Excel spreadsheet. For those of you that are not comfortable with it, I'll go through it slowly so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, in the first page, when you open it up, the cover sheet has instructions. On the tab below, you can look at a tab on the bottom. It says instructions. Please note that the instructions, you don't have to print that, okay? It's just for your own use. The worksheet, I, I put on number one, the worksheet has um, different tabs, okay? So the first worksheet, the worksheet that you're gonna be using to submit is the cover sheet, which is right here. And it is, I'll go, I'll cover it in a moment, but just so you know, you can go backwards. Um, the disbursements, this is a real important part. And I separated it only because a lot of customers will contact us and say, well, how do I do, write my paycheck? I've never wrote, written a paycheck for myself. So if you want to uh, use this as an example, this is for $10,000. And if you do it over 2.5 months, you do 4,000, 4, 4,000. And the third, um, say the per, third paycheck would be 2,000 because it's 10,000. So that all equals 10,000. You se separated by eight weeks, you could do 1250, 1250 for the eight weeks. If you only want to pay yourself four times every other week, then you just double up. If you want to do it over 10 weeks, then you do $1,000 a month. And if you want to stretch it out over 24 months, then you pay yourself uh, 24 weeks, I'm sorry. You would stretch it out at 416.67 a week. That gives you an idea of how much you would do that, and you can you can use this to to uh, calculate your amount. Okay, next is a sample payroll checks. I'm going to skip the cover sheet because this will give you some ideas. If you if you want if you choose to write payroll checks just to yourself, and you're going to use 100% of that 10,000. This sample is paying myself twice per month. I named it Anna Ampak, my employee, right? That, that would be me. Um, and you would pay, put the date that you paid yourself, 215, the amount, and the check number. Simple. So if you pay yourself four times in the two-month period, I divided it by eight weeks and came up with $10,000. Okay, the next sample is transfers only. I have clients who are transferring through Zelle or through ACH or through their bank, all we need is proof. So you can either give me a statement or you can give me um, the Zelle transfer number and a little receipt, whatever it is that you get um, so that you can provide the proof if needed. Once again, I paid Anna Ampac on 215, I paid 2,500 and I did a Zelle transfer. Instead of the check number, I put Zelle transfer. It's not that complicated. Uh, sample paycheck with additional costs. So here, some some um, examples have been that you can take 60% pay, 
pay payroll and 40%. And that's the maximum that you could use on other expenses. I, I remind you again, this is called the payroll protection program. So they want to make sure that you use your money to pay yourself. Okay. If you choose to pay other expenses that are not on this list or the other list that I provided, then go ahead and pay yourself and reinvest in your expenses. And that again is a choice that you need to make and that you need to talk with your accountants so that you make sure you do this right. Um, here, I paid myself again, Anna and Pack, those three amounts. And because it was 10,000 and I used other funds, it was only, uh, it wasn't the 40%, it was like less than 10% uh, because it's 8.5. Oh, pardon, 8.5%. So the total amount that I used was 850 because I could only subtract, I could only use $425 out of my mortgage based on my one little room that I used for my accounting, based on my accountant. And so I went ahead and put those two costs. I put the check numbers and then I paid, I, I put the amount. So at the end, it totals $10,000, but this is only an example um, so that you can have an idea of how you do this. The most important part of this whole form in this cover sheet is that you organize how you're gonna use your money and you do it the right way because you wanna be forgiven. This is the most important part of it. Number two, it helps us not have to call you and say how much, how much. Work with each client because we have uh, many, many clients. We were really blessed to be able to serve quite a bit. So much more than last year. So we're really excited and we wanna make this as easy of a process as it can be. Thank you so much for attending. And if there's any questions that you have, please let, let me know. Oh, one more thing. If you notice on your cover sheet, I have one, 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 one. Just take that off because if you do, what I did is I made it so that it sums the amount on the bottom and on this, this other section as well, the months, you see it, it automatically deducts it. So, so you know what it, it's used for. I just put a one just as a placeholder. Thank you again and have a blessed day. Hello and welcome back to the PPP Forgiveness Program Walkthrough. Thank you for joining us. Brian Kennedy coming back at you again. Anna Rubelkava coming back at you again. We're going to be walking through a mock payroll protection forgiveness application to make sure you get a clear picture of what the full process looks like. Thank you for tuning in. Anna, take it away. Hello. I am really excited to be able to show this portion of the process because you'll see all the different parts of this application that you've already filled out just because we communicated and we have all the information on the system. So there's no sense in you filling it out unless you really feel like it, then we're okay with that, okay? Uh, the application completes your name, it has Anna Ampak, this is just a sample. Uh, and we're doing business as the forgiveness portal. So that would be your first name, last name, and then if you're doing business as somebody else, or you have a corporate name, or it depends on your structure. Ours already has the information, the way we did your loan. So it'll be perfect. If it's not perfect, let me know, or if it's misspelled. Uh, the address, it puts that information, my TIN number, my telephone number where you could reach me. Of course, my extension is 116, by the way. This is our telephone number at Ampac. Uh, on it, we're located in Ontario. I'm the primary contact on this, and it has your email address. It already refilled, it's already filled it out. If this is your first draw or your second draw, it'll check the applicable one. It'll give the SBA loan number and it'll give your lender uh, loan number, which is Ampac's phone lender number. It'll give your total amount of your loan. The data was dispersed and the number of employees that we have. Now, on that other form, I said, if you want to contact me by email, all I need to know is how many employees at the time of forgiveness of the application. So that would be one because I, it's still just me. The covered period is the date that we funded and eight weeks. This is calculated 
um, and the computer will put those dates in there. So you're not able to file before that date. You notice this one was funded on May 19th. It's going to fund, it's going to be a, um, available for eligibility for PPP forgiveness with SBA on November the 2nd. So I can't sign and date it before November the 2nd because I shouldn't have used all my money. The amount of the loan spent on payroll costs. This is why I really, really stress to our clients, instead of using your funds for anything else, this is the only thing that it asks on the application other than how many people work there. It's easier if it's the full amount. I usually request the full amount. However, if you do not use the funds appropriately, AMPAC has the right to turn around and recommend less or recommend the uneligible cost not to be included. So when you initial this, you're going to look at the each section is really important because you're certifying the borrower certifies to all that he is um, initially or she is initially below next to each one. So most people say, why do is there blanks? And I'm like, no, that's your initials. Just so you know, when even though we fill this all out, you are responsible for this. You are responsible for telling us. But because you come to AMPAC, we have the information. I normally just ask you these two questions. How many employees and how much did you spend on payroll? That's why that cover sheet is so important. And to get you into the right frame of mind so that you could get forgiven. The last part of it is the, the next initial section is that, the, that you're certifying that all is true and correct in all the material aspects and that you knowing and you understand that you knowingly, if you make a false statement for forgiveness of the SBA, it's punishable by law. Kind of scary, huh? It's not worth it. Pay yourself. Uh, and then you can just read through this. And then here's your signature. Uh, many people ask me questions about the signature. It is you, the borrower, or a representative that did this. So if it's a company, you're the representative, whether you be the president, the secretary, or somebody you designated. Uh, date, you print your name and your title. The next page is all in, is important for us. Here I put, I did not disclose, I didn't, I'm a male, I am a, I did not disclose and I did not disclose. You know, I should have put that I'm Hispanic. I should have put that I'm American Indian and Hispanic. I could put both, I could put that I'm white. I could put that I'm uh, any of these choices. I, I usually put in three or, or whatever it is that the client puts. And this, the very top section, we really appreciate it. If you'll tell us if you're veteran or non-veteran, we wanna make sure that we serve us all minorities, all walks of life, every color in the rainbow. So please, we just want to make sure that if we have this, that we're serving our community because our community is very diverse and we appreciate you completing this. So those are the two pages that you're going to submit once you finish this and you give me how many people work there. I'll put one. And then how much did I use for payroll? I'm going to put that I used all of it for payroll because payroll is completely eligible. When in doubt, pay yourself, then pay whatever else you want to pay. Okay. Thank you so much for attending. I look forward to completing this process. As you can see, this didn't even take us 10 minutes and I explained the whole thing to you. So when I put it in your portal, you're going to see it. You'll get a notification. And then when you sign it and update it, all I want you to do is to change it from sample application to, well, whatever the name of your, your document is, then change it to signed sample application or signed Anna Ampec. I usually put the customer's name or the business name and then just change it over to signed Anna Ampec or the title. Thank you so much for listening in. I look forward to doing business and completing this process. I um, have one more letter that I want to share with you. And um, that way you'll know what the end 
the total end is. Okay, so this is a notice of paycheck protection program forgiveness payment. Once you submit that, it takes between two months and sometimes as little as a week when they're when the whole program is already in effect. Um, if there's any questions, they will contact us. But here's a, a sample letter. This one was the amount of forgiveness that we requested. They did not pay the $1,000. They paid the interest. So they deducted that amount. Even though I requested a bigger amount, they turned around and only paid 10166 okay? What happened is the borrower paid back some of the money and um, she didn't want to use it for payroll and she didn't want to use it for other um, business expenses. So she decided she didn't want to mess with SBA. This is a really great example, as a matter of fact. We, did, we lent her 15120 The amount of forgiveness I requested was the amount with the e, e, uh, EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan deduction, which they made, they wanted us to deduct, but I did put it for the full amount, and then they turned around and uh, gave us only ten thousand one sixty six plus the interest, and the forgiveness payment was on twelve eleven twenty twenty. We actually approved the loan on February nineteenth. And this just tells you all the details that you're going to see on your letter. This is the most important part. The borrower must retain all records relating to the borrower's PPP loan amount for six years from the date the loan is forgiven or paid. Not the date that you got the loan, but the date you were forgiven. So in our portal, when you give us the information, you know, the good thing about it is that you have an extra um, uh, I guess an extra copy and we get to verify it so that we could help and recommend the full amount to be forgiven. And that's how we assist you. The other thing is that should something happen to your records, we have a cover sheet that tells us how you use the money and we have the receipts and we can submit it immediately to SBA. We have had a few audits and, I'm, and, and when they, I say audit, they ask me even for the complete note. So please, 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 please submit your information so we could assist you. And we look forward in working with you. And thank you so much for attending this, sec this session of the tutorial. All right. I hope that provided some type of insight. We will be going through questions at this time. I see there are still a few inside of the chat. So Maida, I will be reading them out loud here and then we will be able to address those live. First question. Brian, can you speak just a little bit louder for everyone? Yes, thank you so much. So the first question that I do see in the chat that is still open, Norma Morales posted that we are a trucking, trucking company, would fuel receipts, and I believe she may have been putting the rest of her question, uh, and we will be reporting our loan on our taxes as income. Okay, Norma, it seems like you're asking about would fuel receipts suffice for your payroll protection program forgiveness. You can pop in the Q&A if that is accurate, but Correct. Awesome. Thank you, Norma. So those are applicable for eligible expenses. That is within the 40%. Make sure you still utilize 60 for payroll. I do see a question from Edsuko Esiki. I'm so sorry if I have pronounced that incorrectly. Please forgive me. Um, but your question, if you are collecting unemployment plus you received PPP, you may need to speak to your accountant, but if you paid yourself over the eight to 24 weeks, then use the example Anna mentioned. And then the question was, may I ask, what was the example that Anna mentioned? Sorry, I missed it, no worries. Anna, do you wanna speak on the example? And then we'll roll through the rest of the questions here. Brian, I'll jump in and me? then let, yeah, oh, Anna, go right ahead. I think I responded to that question though. And what I was saying, if someone collected unemployment, I'm not sure of the um, 
the tax implications that you're going to have to review with your CPA about unemployment and PPP. But Anna gave some examples of ways to calculate or ways to write your check, especially if you're sole prop, uh, sole proprietor or independent contractor for if you've been giving up, given a PPP loan. And she gave an example of whether you pay yourself every other week or whether you pay yourself weekly so that you divide that if I get a $10,000 paycheck protection program loan and I divide it by 10 or divide it by eight, that's gonna give me the amount that I'm gonna pay myself every week or that I'm gonna pay myself every two weeks so that you're um, doing that over the minimum of eight weeks of covered period. And Anna, you might add to that. But what I've heard, and I, I do agree with you, Hilda, is that you have to speak with um, your accountant because there have been some changes. However, I'm understanding that um, it was kind of funny. An attorney called me that he got a PPP loan and he looked it up and he was told he had to disclose it because he's self-employed and it is income that is coming in. So he chose to do it over a 24 week period so that he could disclose it that way. So it wouldn't affect him. So each one of you are going to have different cases. Once again, I agree with Hilda. The best thing for you to do is talk to your accountant before you make a decision like that, but you can't, cannot overlap uh, benefits is my clear understanding. You cannot overlap the benefits. They will be forgiven and there's a way to do it, but I do not have the answer for that one. Okay. Okay. So the next question we have is from Paula Clagon. She asked, as a Schedule C filer, if I transferred the entire amount at once, what should I do now? What I did with other clients is they ended off paying themselves every week till they paid it off because you still have money coming in, hopefully, and then you just start paying yourself and, and not, because you cannot, you have to be able to document it. That's the only way I could suggest. And most of the clients were, they went ahead and put it back in and just paid themselves two checks and two and a half checks or two, every two weeks, three checks. And um, they were done in uh, eight weeks still or 10 weeks, I guess it is, because it's two months and then the two weeks in the next period. And they gave me the checks. I, um, I could talk to you individually and you can explain it to me a little bit further. Maybe you can document it. Maybe you had, you took draws. I mean, you said you paid it all to yourself at once. Uh, you still cannot declare it for eight, for eight weeks because you won't be eligible for it till then. I hope that answers your question. And of course, feel free to pop back in the Q&A as well. So a couple more minutes left in our time period for today. I'm going to keep rolling down our questions list. I see a question from Robert Rotman. I'm a little unclear how you selected, how you select the covered period. Is the 25% reduction compared to the same period from the previous year? Your covered period begins the date the loan funds and it goes for a wait eight week period. The eight week period, uh, I always look it up on the I, on a date calculator as well, but the computer is really accurate and um, it picks the same date in eight weeks. Usually it's the same day, business day in eight weeks down the road. That's how you select it. If you have any questions, you're welcome to call me and I'll give you the exact date for your, from the date of your funding. And I do have that information, by the way. And in terms of the 25% reduction, there's two components of 25% reduction. One, if you're trying to do a second draw, then the, um, there's a requirement that the revenue be reduced by 25%. And it does have to be either annual between 20, 2020 and 2019, or by the same quarter period. So if it was Q1 2020, 
needs to be looking at Q1 2021. If it was Q1 2019, it should be Q1 2020 or between the same quarter or quarter to quarter in, um, in second quarter, one year, second quarter, the other year, but it does need to be in the same period. Thank you for that. We have a repeat question here. I second the question, is the PPP loan to be reported as income at tax time? That is from an anonymous intended. We've actually gotten answers to that question and, and the PPP loan is not to be shown as income on the tax returns, but I would just urge you to talk to your tax preparer. So you're saying yes. if I get a PPP loan, is it going to be shown as income? It's a loan. So loans are shown as debt. They're not shown as income. When I get forgiven for that loan, is it to be shown as income? Again, talk to your uh, CPA about how they show the PPP loan and the forgiveness component. Okay, we have five more questions here. On the first, for, this is from Paula Clagon. On the first page of the application, the loan disbursement date and the first year of the covered period is the same. Why? Should, okay, I, I, the, the first date is the date of funding. It's the date of funding, and that's when you receive your money. That is the covered period on that application. Thank you, Anna. We have a question from Melanie Reynolds, who has a C Corp that they collected unemployment before the loan was funded. Should I still pay myself first and then my employees, keeping my 941s? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the second part of the question. The second part of the question was, should I still pay myself first and then my employees? Okay. Melanie is planning to keep her 941s. They're not planning to, that's the portion I've been hearing. Uh, they're not planning to uh, file the 941s? She, she is keeping her 941s. Oh, excellent. Then she can pay her employees first. I mean, because it's payroll protection. So the, whether she pays herself first, or, I mean, if she had one, I'll give an example. If she has one person when she filed for the PPP program and all her employees came back because, you know, it opened up again. So now she has three employees or four employees. She's going to probably pay her employees first. And I understand that. And you can be able, you'll be able to document that because you have the 941. So yes, you can pay your employees first and then pay yourself. Does that answer? No, if not, feel free to pop back in the Q&A, okay? Yes, Thank please. you, Anna. All righty. So three more questions here. Julie Funk asked, I'm so sorry for asking a possible repeat question. No worries, Julie. My checking account is my personal slash business account. Because I have a home business and my business is filed under my social security number, do I need to open a different checking account or can I make my transfers to a personal savings account? So Julie, we did address this, but Anna, feel free. Yes, um, you can because you have a transfer of two accounts. And what I'll have you do is when you do when you do your you file your forgiveness, I'll just have you make that statement because you use your personal account for your business account or how you whatever account you use for each one. You're going to explain it, and then we'll have a record of it. So at mm -hmm. least you're declaring it and you're certifying that to us that you are doing that. Um, and I, I, I'm hoping that that'll be an acceptable answer to SBA because I think that when you are self-employed, many people do not have a separate business account. But I do recommend that you always have two accounts, one for business and one for personal. This is a good example of how important it is. 
and Brian, I want to just jump in on a question. I know our time is wrapping up, but I want to address a question that's in the chat um, because it's um, it's a critical question, and it came from someone who was asking, "How can you have both pay both collect unemployment and apply for um, a PPP loan?" And uh, I certainly understand that question. It is, it appears to be uh, double dipping. If you're getting unemployment because you're not employed and you have, um, and you're getting the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Um, again, those are federal dollars. So if you're getting both, you should be able to, you, you, you should make sure you're prepared for an audit and that you're able to explain that because when you sign for a Paycheck Protection Program loan, you are saying you're going to use it for the purpose that it was established and that you are, you are in fact um, employing someone even if that is yourself. And so if you, if a person uh, is fraudulent to the federal government, the Paycheck Protection Program application really spells out that that individual is subject to criminal charges. So please be very careful if you have a Paycheck Protection Program loan and you received unemployment, you definitely want to make sure that you have understood and you're following the guidelines of the law and the guidelines of the program when you complete those forms and you're not participating in fraudulent activity because the federal government and the FBI are investigating all those fraudulent cases. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Thank you, Hilda. That Thank is you. really important. And I know someone right. also asked as we wrapped up, wrap up, is this being recorded? And it is being recorded. And all of the videos that you heard from this team, this incredible team who's been working so hard on behalf of small businesses, their presentations will be available on the website and you have all of the contact information as well, so that if you have any further questions, you can refer to our website at ampac.com, or you can call our office. We answer our phones at 909-915-1706. And uh, I personally want to thank Brian and Anna for the incredible leadership they've had in these programs, both on the origination side of PPP loans and the forgiveness side. Uh, we want to make sure that our small business clients are getting the forgiveness of these PPP loans as it was established to do, which is why we put together the webinar series so that we can make sure that you're served well and you're getting the forgiveness that you deserve so that you don't have to have that debt. And please know we're available to serve you with our other programs and would be delighted to continue your growth and to support your growth. Thank you. Hilda, I also wanna to add to, to everyone that the forms that I provided on the video that we sh shared with you, we do give them to all of our clients. So you will have them as soon as you fund or shortly after. If you've not received them, you can always send us an email and we will get them right out to you. We had one last question in the chat before we close out. John Costello asked that his question be answered. He's three weeks late on his 10 months. Is there a grace period at all, or is there an extension allowed? He said he's complying. He just didn't get his forgiveness paperwork in on time. No problem. Um, you actually have between eight weeks and 24 weeks. So you're still on time. You can still continue to pay yourself. And at the end, you just call me a week before and say, I'm ready for my form. 
I'll still put your eligible date because that's the date that you can file for your forgiveness, but you still have that extra time. You actually have more time than that because there's a deferment period on your first payment. If you read your loan, do your loan documents, it's, I want to say 16, oh, 16 weeks after, no, no, 16 months after the date is funded, 16 weeks after the date is funded is when they actually start asking us to ask you for your payments. All right, all right. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining us for this webinar. We're grateful to serve you. We are giving our best every day just to know that. We will be posting this webinar recording on our YouTube channel, and we will make sure to link it to our website as well. And of course, as always, feel free to reach out and we would love to support you. Thank you all for joining us. And I hope you all have a great day, great weekend, and happy Mother's Day to the mothers in the audience. Thank you all, and have an awesome day. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yay, team. Yay, Good team. Good job. <laughs> great you. job. I love the videos. That is so cool. <laughs> And they live on yes. and you have the forms. And so really, really good job. Really good job. You know, it was so good. Um, the I think we're still recording. Yes, we are. Oh, I will stop recording now. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit it. <laughs>